Hello guys, a very good morning. Today we gonna learn perfect history and examination for right elect for Samas. And this is the third lecture in series for the abdomen GI surgery. First one was obstructive jaundice, second was, was GI mass and gastric carcinoma mass and third is the right elect for Samas. So before this you must see gastric carcinoma mass video and that would be much more helpful. Today's video would be a little longer because we will also cover acute abdomen, colon and rectal malignancy and other abdomen masses. We will just go through superficially. So let's start. Mm, so before that uh, you must know what is the differential diagnosis for right iliac fossa mass. It could be parietal swelling or it could be ab intra-abdominal swelling. For parietal swelling it could be lipoma iliac abscess burrowing into abdomen, abdom appendicular abscess burrowing into abdominal wall, desmoid tumor, pyogenic abscess. In intraperitoneal, it could be appendicular mass or abscess, ileocecal TB, carcinoma cecum, mesenteric lymph node, typhitis, actinomycosis, Crohn disease, also ovary in female tubular ovarian mass, fibroid, Intersusception could be common in children. For extraperitoneal, it be psoas abscess, sarcoma, undescended testes in males, or unascended kidney, tumor of bone and cartilage. So most three common uh, right iliac fossa mass which you will find is appendicular mass which is most common and then could be a ileocecal TB or carcinoma cecum. So these three are the most common cause for the right elect fossa mass and we will be in this right elect fossa mass video we will be discussing these three causes in detail. Just remember that the extra peritoneal or the retro peritoneal masses uh, they don't move with respiration they does not fall forward when we do the exaggerated lateral position as I have already discussed in the gastric carcinoma video and never do knee elbow position for the to look for extra peritoneal mass so let's go ahead right uh, some special cases like if they ask some other causes also in female if like if they ask you what are the um, special causes of right leg for some mass in females uh, it could be related to ovary tubo ovarian fibroid or desmoid tumor if it is swelling extending below the inguinal ligament could be ovarian cysts, psoas abscess or pelvic abscess or rare some com rare lumps in the right leg for some mass it could be actinomycosis amoeba typhitis aneurysm or Crohn disease so, let's start with the history as usual you will ask about name age so this is as per the age group like when you ask the age so what are the abdomen pain causes in case of uh, uh, newborn intestinal obstruction uh, in case of infant volvulus interception Michael's diverticulum in case of children appendicitis mesenteric lymphadenitis peritonitis or it could be round worm infestation uh, in case of young adult appendicitis or perforation in case of adults in case of elders elderly it could be sigmoid volvulus malignancy so as per the age with abdomen pain you have to keep these differential diagnoses in your mind for identification gender especially if it is female i already told you the causes if it is a case of acute abdomen like in case there is a severe pain then think of ruptured ectopic twisted ovarian cyst or acute salpingitis in male if in case of acute pain you have to think of abdomen pain you have to think of peptic ulcer, pancreatitis, intersusception or volvulus. Recurrent abdominal, uh, then you have to ask about the occupation. If there is a recurrent abdominal colic pain, it is common in painters due to lead poisoning or some arsenic factory workers. You have to ask about education address. Uh, coming to the chief complaint, pain in abdomen for these days or vomiting. Uh, you can mention like lower abdomen or upper abdomen uh, lump for how many days put it in a chronological order 
and chief complaint is keep in patient language look at the history of presenting illness patient was apparently well for so many days and then he started having pain in abdomen and all and then asked then elaborate each of the symptom in detail like for example for the pain where is the site and duration continuous or intermittent what is the nature where is the radiating ampetnicitis pain will start at umbilicus then radiate to the right iliac fossa how why did this happen it's due to the development from the t10 level and also shift from visceral to parietal peritoneum and this happens within one week and it would be associated with vomiting fever and later on it will fall it will form a lump in the right iliac fossa left of umbilicus if it starts from the left of umbilicus to left iliac fossa then it could be gastrointestinal at a anastomic ulcer what are the aggravating factor what are the relieving factor then is the character if there is a vomit if it is a vomiting you have to ask whether there is a nausea or not nausea is an early sign of chronic appendicitis it could be there in pancreatitis even in gastric carcinoma you can see nausea then you have to ask about vomiting whether it is projectile or non projectile content vomitus bile stain or not or blood stain duration frequency if there is any mass patient comes with a mass you have to say uh, what was the size when it noticed what is like right now it is progression sudden or it has the same size how the how the patient notice the lump what is the side duration what is associated with pain or fever generally when it is carcinoma cecum there is like history of anemia or feeling seeing paler or feeling weakness fatigue there is anorexia there is gradual development of uh, mass and there is vague abdomen pain and jaundice in case of intersusception like position of mass may keep on changing like in during the intersusception mostly the proximal part of the intestine goes into the distal part patient complains of colicky pain and a history of other other presenting things you can ask about fever whether it is evening rise or not it's a classical sign of tuberculosis and with the tb there will be weight loss you can also ask about any uh, other symptoms like cough with expectoration if there is a significant weight loss or not whether there is loss of appetite evening rise of temperature or any night sweats these are classical symptoms of tb this will uh, this will give you an indication that the patient had the tb of lung and generally especially in females when they swallow their sputums because they do they do have a good habit of not spitting out so they might get abdomen tb quite often so if you are thinking of abdomen tb do also rule out pulmonary tb first uh look whether the patient can tolerate solids and liquid because it will tell you about intestinal obstruction is partial or complete any history of ab uh, if you are suspecting obstruction when we see ileocecal tb if it is ileocecal tb it causes subacute intestinal obstruction and it will cause vomiting distension of abdomen there will be colicky abdomen pain there will be constipation there will be history of tb when it is appendicitis patient rejects food because it causes nausea and vomiting in case if a patient has gone through gi tract surgery then they might have something called blind loop syndrome in the blind loop syndrome there is anemia there is loss of weight and there is steatorrhea so coming to the bowel habit or bowel history basically you, you should know what is normal three times per day to three times in a week is completely normal so when we see there is absolute constipation means there is arrest of feces and flatus it happens in intestinal obstruction or peritonitis when we see constipation it could be due to uh, it could it is common in appendicitis presence of tenesmus what is tenesmus So this is a very common viva question. Tenesmus is ineffic ineffectual 
स्ट्रेनिंग एट स्टूल विथ पासिस ऑफ म्यूकस एंड ब्लड हैपन्स इन पेल्विक अपेंडिसाइटिस और पेल्विक एप्सिस एक्यूट इंटरसेप्शन फीचर ऑफ इंटेस्टाइनल ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन इज देयर देर इज पासिज ऑफ म्यूकस एंड ब्लड इन द स्टूल we call it as current jelly stool this is also a one of your mcq question current jelly stool is seen in acute interception and there is intermittent pain and especially if you see in the children their mother will complain sometime baby compl- all of a sudden start crying then he is little okay or happy hasta hai rota hai hasta hai rota hai and there is a red color teddy stool which should give you an idea of acute interception as your differential diagnosis you should keep in your mind when you if the patient say complains of more with the diarrhea with abdomen pain and then you can think of ulcerative colitis as your differential regional ileitis acute enteritis so past history you have to see if there have been a any past history of any similar episode like acute appendicitis or renal colitis or intestinal obstruction पर्सनल हिस्ट्री वेद इज स्मोकिंग और एल्कोहल बिकॉज ऑफ मेलेग्नेंसीज कार्सिनोम कॉमन टी बी इज ऑल्सो कॉमन विद दीज बोथ अदर इज फैक्टर इन केस इफ फीमेल यू कैन आस्क अबाउट द मैंस्ट्रल हिस्ट्री एलर्जीज एनी सिग्निफिकेंट हिस्ट्री यू कैन आस्क इन द फैमिली स्पेशली रिलेटेड टू टू कैंसर्स जी एम एलेग्नेंसीज आर ऑफन कुड बी हेरीटेटरी और कुड बी पार्ट ऑफ द सिंड्रोम so you have to summarize your history like this must a year old male or female presented with this type of pain at this site or associated with vomiting fever for so many days there is no history of loss of weight and history suggestive of <coughs> acute appendicitis or chronic appendicitis or if you are suspecting of tb then you can say uh, tb or the, if you can also present like patient comes with the abdomen mass Yeah, I'm thinking of uh, carcinoma cecum. So, whatever is your differential diagnosis, you can mention. So, before going ahead to examination, there is free sex education guide. I have written it. You can just see it, uh, download it. I'll put the link in the description box. It's freely available in the Google Store also in form of Android app only till now. and if anyone wants a hard copy they can use the coupon code as sex education and get it from the notion press uh, in notion press only you will get this 25% off discount and it is available in hindi english malayalam and do share it with your friends who are very curious to know about uh, their sexual health and who have lot of doubts so i have added all the scientific facts so coming to the examination part Uh, you do the normal general examination uh, talk about belt orientation nourishment any sign of dehydration look at the pallor could be there in malignancy bleeding gi poor malnutrition icterus malignancy can if it is affecting the portal system or infiltrating to pancreas can cause icterus jaundice cyanosis clubbing lymphadenopathy especially the na- neck lymphadenopathy could be due to the tuberculosis any pedal edema look at the blood pressure pulse respiratory rate temperature and spo2 if there is a fever or pain then respiratory rate will also increase and pulse will also increase in case of pain and fever in case of acute intestinal obstruction their pulse could be normal but Uh, pulse could be normal but there will be dehydration which will increase the pulse in internal hemorrhage pulse becomes immediately rapid in case of fever i already told you respiratory rate will also increase and pulse rate will also increase pulse rate gradually rises in case of acute appendicitis so coming to the examination of abdomen definitely take the consent expose the particular area examine the perineum also supracavical fossa and renal angle make the patient lie down and then you can do and remember abdominal swelling are seen better uh, look for the shape contour umbilicus movement with if there is any mass where, whether the mass is moving with respiration or not if it is not moving that or there is a sluggish or nil 
then it could be due to the peritonitis hemorrhage into peritoneal cavity if there is a localized part of the abdomen is not moving think of limited respiratory movement could be due to the local underlying inflammation like if the right hypochondrium reason is not moving that well then you think of gallbladder related etiology or liver if the right leg for some mass area is not moving well with the respiration you can think of append acute appendicitis see if there is also any fullness in the right leg for some mass if there is any fullness uh, like then you can think of any distended cecum or right leg for some mass i already told you think of three common things which is illusical tb it could be a cecum carcinoma or it could be your acute appendicitis there are as i already told you there are other causes you have to always keep those other causes also in your mind that would be as in your viva whether any visible gastric epigastric swelling seen in your gastric carcinoma peristaltic movement especially ladder pattern is seen in small bowel obstruction any scar dilated vein fullness in right leg fossa already told you distended cecum seen better than felt hernia orifice renal angle perineum and supraclavicular lymph nodes you have to see pain palpation like superficially look for the warmth or any tenderness or any guarding or rigidity for the deep examine the liver spleen or any mass or any hernia site and examination also uh, genital examinations are also as i already told is a part of your abdomen generally when we see there is a muscular guarding when there ever guarding is the indication of it is an indication of irritation of parietal peritonitis it could be of two type voluntary or involuntary so whenever voluntary uh, guarding is there it will disappear when the person does expiration so you tell the person to ex exhale so when the person exhales this voluntary guarding will disappear or reduce whenever there is a involuntary guarding it can uh, indicate of underlying parietal peritonitis or there is a regional guarding is there into certain area then you can think of uh, etiology related to certain area like uh, cholecystitis or appendicitis in case of uh, appendicitis and especially if the uh, app appendix is retrocecal then guarding will be present over the loin and if it is paracecal then it could be present over the right iliac fossa so in case of swelling especially in case the right iliac fossa mass uh, comment about the site plane of the swelling plane i already told you how to look at the intraperitoneal and extra peritoneal swelling you can differentiate through lateral exaggerated position don't never do knee elbow position i already explained explained all these tests in the stomach carcinoma video do definitely go and see learn how to assess the plane of the swelling in the abdomen and um, comment on the size extent shape surface con border consistency is difficult uh, in the abdomen swelling to especially to comment on cystic or solid as we are not able to fix the swelling and uh, to certain extent swelling can be uh, if it is attached with uh, mesentery evaluate if it is attached to the mesentery or not in especially in the right iliac fossa or abdomen swelling and try to get all around the swelling in for the abdomen case see whether there is a movement with respiration or not this will also help you to differentiate it is intraperitoneal or extra peritoneal or retroperitoneal masses uh, pulsation over the swelling expensile or transmitted so whenever they will ask you about lower abdominal swelling they will ask you a differential diagnosis so we will see the first these differential diagnosis how will you differentiate appendicular mass it could be it will be irregular firm tender and always fixed and short duration will, will it be there like 72 uh, 48 to 72 hours after the acute appendicitis this will form and this will disappear in 2 to 3 days if it does not disappear in 2 to 3 days then think of carcinoma of something like carcinoma of cecum and then um ultrasound might be needed in case of your 
appendicular abscess and appendicular abscess when we see uh, mostly it will be never kept in your exam because they need an urgent urgent uh, surgery so they will have a fever red and edema over the abdominal wall lower border will be palpable when we see hyperplastic ileocecal tb so this you have to remember in hyperplastic uh, ileocecal tb patient can feel the bowel movement this is, is generally one of the another history and there is firm mass history will be for months there will be barbaric pain colicky type and there will be pulled up cecum carcinoma cecum generally will be seen in elderly patient it will be hard mass irregular fixed lump and other lymph nodes of the abdomen or pelvic will be also enlarged there will be anemia weight loss anorexia and occult bird in the stool for secondary lymph node if you see in the abdomen generally there will be hard nodular and fixed mass for tb lymph node they will be uh, already there will be matted lymph node they are made be formation of cold abscess that burrows through the tissue and comes more of superficial so now coming to the other causes other causes could be a uh, iliac artery aneurysm you will have a expensile type of pulsation there uh, would be iliac there could be iliac abscess uh, there could be ileocoas cold abscess there could be intersusception in intersusception there will be empty right iliac fossa which we call as your dance sign there could be ovarian cyst in case of female then you have to do a pv examination also there could be actinomycosis of cecum or appendix there will be hard fixed mass multiple discharges with yellow sulfur granules and there will be there could be discoloration of the skin over the right iliac fossa so in this slide we will try to differentiate how to differentiate these three when we think of crohn's disease think of three things patient will have abdomen pain patient will have patient will have diarrhea patient might have mass with abdomen pain which can mimic acute appendicitis and there will be history of weight loss because patient is having diarrhea so there will be weight loss so these three things will be there or three to four things which is diarrhea weight loss fever or abdomen pain and abdomen mass uh, right iliac fossa mass which will be insidious onset generally crohn disease will have four stages inflammatory stage where there will be mass colitis stage where there will be diarrhea and fever weight loss stenotic stage where there will be small gut obstruction and fistula stage where there will be spontaneous internal external fissure or fissure or fissure in ano so remember there will be rarely any rectal bleeding anal anomaly would be there in 80% of the cases and cecum remain at its position i already told you if there is a carcinoma cecum there would be pulled up cecum then in the barium meals it will show you a string sign of cantor this is also your mcq question then coming to your ulcerative colitis there will be no mass this is a big differentiating thing it will be more common in women young adults around 20 to 30 year old there will be abdomen discomfort there will be history of relapse and remission stage in acute stage patient will have fever mucus blood stain prolen diarrhea if it is chronic ulcerative colitis patient will be having wasting and anemia there will be uniform affected of mucosa just for the mcq purposes like ulcers inside the intestine will be uniform and there will be no fistula formation when we come to the diverticulosis pulsion diverticula plus infection which mimics left iliac or left sided appendicitis what happens is diverticular occurs due to the excessive intra colonic pressure and in the initial stage of diverticulitis is presented with mostly rectal hemorrhages flatulent distension of the lower abdomen and the later stages will present with fever malaise pain tenderness in the left iliac fossa which will mimic like your uh, left sided uh, appendicitis then ask if the patient is having 
rectal hemorrhages or flatulent distension or flower abdomen this should give you and left electrosomas think of then diverticulitis to differentiate between these two and diverticulitis there will be systemic manifestation in case of ulcerative and Crohn's dis uh, Crohn's disease which is your erythema nodosa there could be pyoderma there could be arthritis is common synovitis is seen so any systemic manifestation if you see with the GI like diarrhea or um, any lower abdominal related manifestation always think of Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis so coming to the very important slide which is features of your acute appendicitis examiners will ask you about each and every sign in this slide and every detail why this happened why this this, this does not happen so be very much prepared for this so when you will be doing a superficial examination if you see any hyperesthesia like when you pick uh, touch that area or you uh, pinch the skin over that area there will be a patient will have a wince or pain so that area is your serine strangle but are its boundaries line joining umbilicus and anterior superior iliac spine and pubic symphysis these three are the three major points when you join all these three then you form a Sharon strangle and Sharon strangle is on right side this you have to remember don't do it on the left side if it is on the right side Sharon strangle hyperesthesia this is one of the key feature of acute appendicitis remember about Sharon strangle uh, this hyperesthesia will disappear in case there is bursting if there have been any bursting of gangrenous appendicitis then this hyperesthesia over the Sharon strangle will go away then is your roving sign in the roving sign pressure on the left iliac fossa pain uh, if you like you will try to compress on the left iliac fossa and there will be pain in the right iliac fossa this is due to the shift of the coil of the intestine then is your Bloomberg sign or release sign what happens is when you press on the right iliac fossa mass and then you suddenly release that pressure there is a rebound tenderness after pressing or taking your hand away from the right iliac fossa mass and the patient will wince and that is your your release sign or Bloomberg sign this is a sign of your peritonitis and what happens is that as soon you release the pressure then abdominal muscle musculature springs back to the original place and patient will immediately cry out or wince then is your tenderness at the McBurney's point so this is also another viva question where is the McBurney's point it's a junction between medial two-third and lateral one-third along the line joining anterior superior iliac spine and your umbilicus so it is at spino umbilical line then they might uh, ask you what is murphy's triad murphy's syndrome so it has three things one is pain then is the vomiting then is the fever so what happens patient with acute appendicitis will have a tri murphy's triad which will first patient will have a pain which will start near the umbilicus then shift toward the right leg fossa then patient will have vomiting and fever will come at the later stage so if three things are there think of acute appendicitis this is a Murphy's triad and Murphy's sign so most uh, then examiner may ask you what is Murphy's sign Murphy's sign we already uh, have seen it is the right hypochondriac tenderness seen in acute uh, cholecystitis in the acute cholecystitis you will see Murphy's sign Murphy's triad or Murphy's syndrome you see in acute appendicitis so uh, what happens is depending on the position of the appendix there will be different tests so 74% of the time 74% of the time appendix will be retrocecal if it is retrocecal means appendix lies over the psoas major muscle appendix will lie over the psoas major and then the patient will have cope psoas test positive means when there will be hyperextension of the hip patient will have the pain there is something also called Baldwick's test when, uh, when the knee is straight and 
hip is flexed that time patient will have the pain ask the patient to raise the leg also so this is baldwick sign and these cos cope psoas test and baldwick sign both seen in retrocecal appendicitis when the appendix is pelvic it is around 21% of the time appendix is pelvic so then cope's obturator test will be positive in this pain on flexion and internal rotation of the hip will cause pain to the patient in case of pelvic appendicitis so all these even in the percentage they they might ask how many times it is ret uh, retrocecal how many times it is pelvic you have to remember all this then some other test just for the information there is something called clean sign what happens shifting away of the tenderness in case of ac acute mesentery adenitis when the patient turns to the left due to the moving of the mesentery there is something called baptist test when the foot end of the bed is moved slightly this will evoke pain in the inflamed organ seen in case of early peritonitis so these two test you can see if there is any case of acute abdomen that time if you are thinking of any other etiology that time you can do these two test now if you think the patient is having renal stone that time you can uh, generally patient with the renal stone will have fixed dull aching pain at the angle between lower border of last rib and the lateral border of the sacrospinalis is there so this area patient will say or patient will complain complain with the back pain or the loin pain and this pain will get worse when the patient is doing running jolting climbing up the stair and there will be utero colic or uteric colic pain when there is a obstruction of PUJ junction, pelvic ureteral junction, and pain will be sudden, gripping pain in the loin tends to radiate towards the groin, may be associated with sweating and vomiting, and it does come, it goes and come back, goes and come back, and may be accompanied with if it is in the ureter or urethra, then there might be hematuria when it is. brushing through the thra or ureter that time it may cause hematuria uh, you have to remember that kidneys uh, kidney will have renal stones which will come and go out like some small forms of stones will uh, flush out through the urine and sometime if it, it gets stuck that time there will be sudden gripping type of pain in the reason and patient might have uh, hematuria also and in case of um the uh, clear renal stone there will be tenderness at the renal angle showing tenderness at the renal angle is called your murphy's kidney punch what happens is press with your thumb at the renal angle which is the lower border of the 12th rib and the outer border of erector spinalis or your sacrospinalis when you press over it the patient will have pain you can palpate kidney uh only when there is a hydronephrosis and palpation of kidney we will see in the medicine uh, video of abdomen examination where i'll tell you how to differentiate between it's a mass of your kidney or, or your spleen then examination of the abdomen uh, as usual you have to do percussion over the liver and the spleen tell for the any enlargement of spleen or liver in case of fasciitis you will see shifting dullness flank full and other thing ovarian cyst there will be no shifting dullness or resonance over the flank you have to do the auscultation abdomen will be silent in case of peritonitis or paralytic uh, ileus there will be increased peristaltic sound or metallic or metallic tinkles in case of intestinal obstruction sluggish sound on the right iliac fossa could be due to your appendicitis per rectal examination you have to look at any right wall tenderness is there then you have to suspect of appendicitis bloomer shelf like there is malignant deposit in the rectal vesicle pouch bulging of anterior wall of rectum or tenderness could be due to the pelvic abscess vaginal examination you can can help you to diagnose as a acute uh, salpingitis 
and as i already told you you have to auscultate for the bowel sound mainly at the para umbilical region along the umbilicus and spino umbilical line for 2 to 3 minutes then for the other systemic examination heart or as you can see for any tb related or even spine you can examine in this case if you're thinking of tb related if you're thinking it's a decimated tb then you can examine the port spine for any port spine or any any spine tenderness then you have to tell your diagnosis that you are suspecting your diagnosis with the diagram is very mandatory uh, there is a right leg fossa mass and you are thinking of appendicular mass or ileocecal tb or cecum carcinoma depending on that and if you are not able to think then you can put your up your diagnosis as right leg fossa mass mostly uh, then you can put your differential diagnosis and in your differential diagnosis you can put it in a sequence wise it could be number 1 i am thinking this number 2 i am thinking this number 3 i am thinking this this is also most, most sometime uh, very well accepted during your exam but the examiner will ask you in detail why you are not able to differentiate or come to one single diagnosis so study for that and try to come up with one dif- one diagnosis so uh, they might ask you what all investigations will you do in this case so basic would be hemoglobin to look for how much blood loss is anemia is there or not if i already told for the occult blood in the stool in case of carcinoma cecum you can do guac test uh, specific tests like in uh, for the abdomen pain generally ultrasound abdomen x-ray abdomen erect barium solomeal with the barium solomeal they might i skew lot of question what all different signs what all you see and diagnosis of what specific is also your colonoscopy so remember there are three contraindications of colonoscopy which is active bleeding is there there is a complete obstruction or there is any stricture formation when we are not able to diagnose anything then we can you can do ct scan of the abdomen if you are thinking any tb related pathology then do want to test x ray and sputum if there is any sputum uh, formation then you can do acid fast staining or cb nat or your gene expert in the sputum for carcinoma cecum you can do the tumor markers ca alpha fetoprotein they my common viva questions are your how will you manage this what are the investigation what is the treatment what is the anatomy and position of appendix i already told you most of the time around 71 to 74% appendix is retrocecal then is your pelvic what is the incision used for appendicectomy generally uh, they use lens or grid iron incision used and how um, appendix is identified is by tracing the convergence tracing the convergence of tinea coli what instrument will you use to hold it that is your bab cox forceps will be used to hold the appendix and appendicular vessels are ligated at meso appendix so all these are your viva questions what are the features of ap- uh, acute appendicitis what all mimics ap- acute appendicitis crohn's disease or peptic perfor- perforation can mimic so in the appendicular mask most of the common question would be what consist of appendicular mask so you have to say it is a inflammatory deposit containing omentum terminal ileum cecum with pericecal fat inflammatory edema and lymphogenitis so that is the thing which forms the appendicular mass and they will ask you ochsner seren regimen which is a b c d e f now what is a b c d e f is that uh, for the a means aspiration with rails tube and that aspiration needs to be done only if there is persistent vomiting then b is for bowel care means uh, purgatives or laxatives should not be given a patient with appendicitis will have constipation and for the bowel care you do not have to give any purgatives or any laxatives because this will uh, cause increase the risk of perforations c is for charting you have to chart the temperature chart the pulse respiratory rate mass size 
because uh, when the patient is on um, conservative treatment uh, his heart rate will decrease his pulse rate will decrease there will be decrease in mass size especially the diameter so the diameter you have to keep on measuring there will be decrease in pain uh, there will be uh, bowel sounds or flatus will be there there will be increase in appetite so all this conservative treatment is uh, will uh, cause improvement in these things if there is not no improvement then you have to think of any carcinoma of cecum or Crohn's disease or any abscess formation so that is an indication also when to stop uh, your conservative treatment so that's why you have to do the charting of all these things d is for drugs antibiotics need to be given to cover all the gram positive and gram negative uh, generally in most of the college they give metrogel and ciprofloxacin, but depends it will keep on changing as per the drug sensitivity in the drugs never ever give painkiller if you give painkillers analgesic it will mask the symptom of complications like perforation so do not give uh, painkillers e is for exploratory laparotomy not to be done the laparotomy can be done only in case of there is abscess formation is there and if you're suspecting an abscess then fluid you have to give iv fluid to correct dehydration and for the few days you have to give the patient as nil per oral npo you have to keep overall the treatment of appendicitis is conservative and after the six week you can do appendicectomy when the inflammation has subsided on the acute appendicitis if you do an appendicectomy then there will be higher chances of forming of fistula mental score or alvardo score they may ask you for acute appendicitis so there's plus 0.1 for each of the symptom of migration of pain anorexia nausea right uh, iliac fossa pain rebound tenderness elevated temperature leukocytosis leukocyte shift for these two there are two points so when this score is less than three there is no appendicitis and it's around 96 percent sensitive if it is score is four, 4 to 6 then you can advise CT scan to confirm and diagnostic accuracy is increased with greater use of CT scanning however CT scan uh, confers risk and disadvantages like it is costly it can cause radiation exposure and contrast related complication but it's kind of uh, so 4 to 6 you are not sure so you will do a CT scan uh, to help you to diagnose say six to seven you can say it as appendicitis and it's around 58 to 88 percent of sensitivity like okay you can say it's a append acute appendicitis or appendicitis then most of one common question would be what is the differential diagnosis of left iliac mass the examiner may ask you okay what if this mass would instead of right iliac fossa it is on left iliac fossa so what are your differentials same for the parietal you have to say uh, lipoma abscess inguinal swelling then intraperitoneal with a sigmoid related it could be diverticulitis which mimics as left-sided appendicitis or carcinoma which will produce constipation and a lump and overall the causes are similar like right iliac fossa except cecum and appendix appendix related swelling won't be there on the left side so this is what you have to keep the basic anatomy in your mind that what all causes will you co uh, will you quote when there is a mass in the left iliac fossa now i will see the swelling in the epigastric region parietal swelling are same like your right hypochondrium or other causes for the intra-abdominal swelling like congenital parietal uh, congenital pyloric stenosis mainly present in two to four weeks year old of male babies with a projectile vomiting with uh, vomiting after breastfeeding there is visible peristalsis sometimes definite lump at the pylorus other causes you know peptic ulcer or carcinoma of stomach then is interception and interception there will be emptiness at the right iliac fossa uh, colicky pain could could be with lump and red currant jelly stool would be there they are you have to think of TB also, any neoplasm, inflammatory conditions like uh, TB or any infection will cause tendon and irregular mass. Carcinoma swelling will be mostly irregular and hard. 
TB peritonitis, in case of TB peritonitis, what happens is momentum rolls up to form a transverse ridge. Then another common cause would be related to pancreas. Pseudocyst of pancreas is collection of fluid in the lesser sac of peritoneal cavity resulting from acute pancreatitis or trauma. It forms a, a very smooth rounded swelling with fluctuation test is positive in case of uh, pseudo cyst of pancreas then other causes you know related to the lymph node or aneurysm uh, aneurysm will have expensile pulsation then tapes mesenterica lymph lymphosarcoma secondary malignancies lymph node so you should know what all structures are there in the epigastric in the abdomen and what all swellings it can present like then umbilical swelling uh, mostly rectus sheath hematoma can occur from the trauma or following conversion due to the tetanus or strychnine poisoning which causes tear of inferior epigastric inferior epigastric artery uh, then think of this desmoid tumor desmoid tumor is type of a fibroma which is not encapsulated and hard arises from the deeper part of rectus abdominalis so it is also called as recurrent fibroid of paget is also another MCQ swelling related to small intestine and mesentery, TB tumor, intersusception, cyst of mesentery, retroperitoneal connective tissues like retroperitoneal cyst, lymphoma, sarcoma. Then coming to hypogastrium reason, there from the parietal it could be uh, lipoma, cold abscess, or urethral cyst. It's same like your umbilical swelling except that urethral cyst could occur which is a remnant of allantois extending from the bladder to the umbilicus becoming obliterated. If it is patent then urinary fistula is formed in the new newborn closure of umbilical cord and vesicle end which is persistent middle segment arises urethral cyst. So urethral cyst is mostly a cystic swelling which lies deep to the abdominal mus musculature and relatively very fixed. There could be swelling related to urinary bladder which will be a gobular swelling and can be palpated at midline and may reach up to umbilicus in chronic retention of urine. It is generally dull in percussion and normally this area is resonant due to the presence of terminal colis of a small intestine. Pressure on distended bladder will induce desire for micturation. There could be swelling related to uterine and appendages like preg pregnancy and fibroid. Appendages means there could be tubo ovarian mass, there would be ruptural tubal gestation, there could be ovarian tumor, there could be cyst, broad ligament cyst could be there. There could be pelvic abscess. In case of pelvic abscess, there could be fever, lower abdomen pain, there could be copious discharge of mucus per annum there could be higher increase of uh, micturation this could be after appendicitis also salpingo ophoritis or perpural sepsis pelvic bone related swelling will be fixed to pelvic wall and there will be bony hard inconsistency there could be swelling related to small intestine or sigmoid then same coming to the right hypo Chondrium swelling, parietal swellings are uh, mostly same related to skin, abscess. Uh, there could be intraabdominal swelling and one of the most important question would be they would my, might ask you <coughs> when the subphrenic abscess occur. It occurs only after the perforated ulcers most commonly and why right sided is common compared to the left. So what happens on the right side is right paragolic gutter is right paracolic gutter is wide and deep and also on the right side there is absent colophrenic ligament there could be swelling related to the stomach duodenum hepatic flexure 
gall bladder we have already discussed kidney it could be solid compensatory hypertrophic or cystic hydronephrosis or pyelonephritis or perinephritic abscess liver it could be congenital radial slope or it could be amoebic hepatitis and abscess what happens in amoebic hep hepatitis and abscess is there is history of amoebic dysentery right hypochondriac pain radiating to the right shoulder irritating the right diaphragm there is high fever and Hedonic cyst is mostly present near to the margin of the liver with palpable, spherical, and smooth swelling, and with hedonic thrill and fluctuations. There is history of attack of urticaria, uh, where there is rash or itching in the skin, eosinophilia, and there could be Cassoni intradermal test will be positive. The other causes would be your uh, suppurative pyeloflebitis, suppurative cholangitis. Gamma of liver, which is very rare, carcinoma of liver, melanotic carcinoma of liver, cirrhosis of liver. Then the swelling of the left hypochondriac region, parietal swellings are mostly same as the right side. There could be swelling related to stomach, left lobe of liver, splenic flexure, tail of pancreas, left or left kidney and adrena, left suprarenal space spleen spleen itself we will be discussing in case of the medicine where infectious causes will be there and non infectious causes and we will try to differentiate where all spleen will in enlarge and especially when it is mildly enlarged or when there is a large splenomegaly massive splenomegaly what we call so we will discuss all the causes in detail in medicine video then there could be differential diagnosis for the right and the left lumbar swelling for the lumbar swelling, parietal would be mostly almost same. The important thing would be it could be right kidney or left kidney and how to differentiate between kidney and the splenic swelling we will discuss in medicine video. And just to promote on Kindle, uh, there are books related to surgery also. If you want to check out the important questions for general surgery, you can a link will be there in the description. You can go and check them out. Now uh, to discuss about colon carcinoma. The colon carcinoma you can differentiate as right sided and left sided. Right sided is generally ulcerative or proliferative, but the left left sided is mostly annular and tubular growth. What happens on the left side is left sided lumen is very narrower, and solid fecal content is more on the left side. That's why annular type of lesions occur more toward the left side and there is a progressive constipation so lumen is not narrower more solid fecal content is towards on the left side compared to the right side so annular reason happens and it causes progressive constipation this is a very much important question and but what happens is when there is a solid uh, fecal content there is a fecal stasis and when fecal stasis happens colon uh, definitely colon is absorbing all the water there is a constipation fecolith occur and this fecolith will cause irritation of the mucosa when there is an irritation of a mucus um, uh, mucosa which causes mucus irritation that causes diarrhea so there is altered diarrhea and constipation Firstly, constipation will occur for a long time, fecolith formation, irritation of the GI mucosa, colon mucosa, then it causes uh, diarrhea due to the mucus irritation. This is a very important question in the viva, why annular reason happen on the left side, why there is an altered diarrhea, first constipation and then altered diarrhea happens in cases of left sided mal malignancy. And there will be no mass in the left sided mass might be, uh, may be present in the right leg fossa mass in case of right sided colon malignancy there would be pain there would be occult bleed there could be melina in the right sided malignancy they may ask you why melina occurs because of uh, this s2 is present in the uh, colon causes melina and it's not due to the presence of hcl it does not cause obstruction there is no constipation no diarrhea while on the left side it also frank bleed will happen and there will be early morning spurious diarrhea colonic mets can in both of the things colonic mets can go to the liver uh, and these mets do not cause jaundice so in the colon carcinoma there could be 
few I have a question one could be which is the most common site so most common site is rectum for the colonic malignancy and around 38 percent of times it will happen in rectum then it could be sigmoid colon which is around 21 percent then would be your cecum which is around 12 percent then it could be transverse colon then could be your ascending colon then will be a descending colon so this is a sequence and they might ask you what are the four common types of uh, carcinoma or tumors in colon most common is adenocarcinoma then is your lymphoma then could be the gist and then could be a carcinoid carcinoid for the carcinoid most common site is appendix in the uh, carcinoma of rectum they might ask what are the pre malignant conditions like adenoma papilloma ulcerative colitis or Crohn's Crohn's disease or polyp clinical feature would be early morning spurious diarrhea generally happens due to the accumulation of mucus overnight this is also an important question and blood in stool could be the most common or earliest sign of colonic malignancy there could be constipation in case of annular growth like on the left side and loss of weight and appetite these are the generic features of malignancy they might ask you <clears throat> some theoretical questions uh, like what is the length of anal canal so all these in carcinoma of rectum you have to uh, do the parrectal examination and they might ask you what is the length of anal canal so the length of anal canal is only 4 cm and what is the rec uh, length of rectum which is 12 cm and they may say when you do a, a digital parrectal examination so parrectal examination can be done up to 8 cm and proctoscopy which we oftenly use in OPD and for examination which is which has a length of 12 cm so they might ask you what is the length of the colonoscopy tube which is 160 cm so with 160 cm of the of the lower GI tract we can examine with a colonoscopy pain uh, we'll be discussing just to promote palliative care made easy book these have a very important and crucial points regarding palliative care palliative care uh, you can see as nothing much different but as a supportive care and i feel every medical student every mbbs student must know about palliative care you can read from this book or read from standard textbook oxford textbook of palliative care is there there are very much very important textbooks are there read about it and more importantly practice it it tells you to how to become a very good doctor to have little empathy think from patient's perspective do not see patient itself only as a disease look at the whole treat the whole patient and it will give you a lot of funders to manage pain basic common management of symptoms you can check it out in the kindle i'll put the link for this book also in the description box it's very important and often missed uh, in the mbbs curriculum to focus on palliative care and most of the doctors try to ignore it but I'm telling you in the practical life this is very much important so as my surgery professor used to say acute acute abdomen so just in missing him and putting up the ahead video acute abdomen so acute abdomen is when a patient complain of acute attack of abdomen pain and so in that what all history you have to ask what is the time of onset early morning could be acute appendicitis. afternoon after post lunch it could be due to the perforation of peptic ulcer uh, pain in acute intestinal obstruction will also uh, be gradual whether the pain is sudden or gradual gradual uh, sudden is generally that's why we call it as acute uh, it could be perforation, colic, torsion or volvulus but gradual it could be also there in case of uh, intestinal obstruction also uh, then we have to see pain is precipitated by purgatives in case of acute appendicitis straining in case of perforation jolting in case of ureter colic is the pain history similar in the past whether there has been on and off history which happens in appendicitis or cholecystitis where, where is the pain you can ask the patient to show the pain with one finger it coincides with the affected organ like this is called a pointing test 
If it is a diffuse pain, patient will generally use the whole hand and say the hair is the pain. With this pointing test, you can find out generally the affected organ. With the type of pain in uh, acute appendicitis, pain is kind of boring in the beginning and becomes uh, suddenly becomes very acute. If the pain is shifting or not, whether pain, acute pain, if it is started from umbilicus, shifting to the right lateral fossa, you can think of acute appendicitis. If the pain radiate from right hypochondriac reason to right leg foresight could be the peptic perforation. What happens in peptic perforation is pain radiate from right, uh, towards right leg fossa as the gastric contents gravitate toward the right paracolic gutter. It mimics acute appendicitis. It mimics acute appendicitis, but it is it is not acute appendicitis. It's due to after the peptic perforation, all this mass infect all this GI content is gravitating and it inflates uh, your peritoneum. It is also called as Valentino syndrome. So another uh, your MCQ or Viva questions they may ask you. Uh, pain radiating from right leg fossa to left leg fossa. It could be in case of acute appendicitis also where there is spreading of peritonitis. Referred pain. So if these all you have to remember pain at epigastric could be due to the stomach duodenum or jejunum from the nerve enough because there is the innervation by T5 to T8. Around the umbilicus, it could due to, due to ileum appendix due to innervation of T9 and T10. Hypogastrium from T11 to T12, L1 and L2, mainly from also from the colon. Uh, from the respective shoulder, like right and left. Right side it could be gall due to gallbladder, left side it could be due to spleen, so due to innervation of C3, C4. Splenic pain uh, referring to the left shoulder is also called as Kehr's sign. Pain from gallbladder can also radiate back just below the inferior angle of the scapula and the right shoulder. Uh, in case of the peptic ulcer perforation, when the leg of the patient is lifted up, then gastric contents gravitates toward the diaphragm and causes pain at the right shoulder. Uh, right scapula due to the T7 and uh, T7 to 9 and due to biliary colic or gallbladder, groin, testis, inner side of the thigh due to L1 and L2 innervation could be due to renal colic or genitofemoral nerve, abdominal wall from parietal pura due to pleurisy, hemothorax or pneumothorax. So uh, you have to remember that gallbladder also has parasympathetic nerve, sup uh, nerve supply through vagus and the nerve supply of gallbladder is also very important and the blood supply this they will ask you especially in case of obstructive jaundice case very very important. So then you have to ask what is the character of the pain. So mostly it would be a colicky. Colicky in case what do you mean by colicky? Colicky is a sharp intermittent sharp intermittent gripping type of pain when it comes becomes suddenly and disappears suddenly it may be associated with nausea and vomiting on reaching when we call it as biliary colic so this will have like biliary colic in case there is a stone in cbd it could be a intestinal colic in case there is a bowel obstruction it will be a renal colic pain when the obstruction is of renal pelvis it could be ureteric colic in case there is a stone in the ureter it could be appendicular colic when there is a obstructive appendicitis and so all thing is obstruction of a hollow organ or a hollow tube this is what is causing the biliary pain remember biliary colic is kind of a misnomer as bile duct or tract does not have any muscle so when it does not have a muscle so it will not cause uh, biliary colic pain it is mainly due to the gallbladder st stone contraction which causes biliary colic pain so this is also very commonly asked so uh, constant burning type of pain can happen in case of peritonitis severe agonizing pain in case of pancreatitis and torsion throbbing type of pain in case of inflammation or hepatitis you they might ask you uh, then you have to ask whether there is any change in the character intestinal colic to constant burning type gives the uh, indication towards strangulation diminution of pain happens in case of perforation of acute appendicitis of peptic perforation aggravating pain when there is a local pressure 
you try to apply and there's a inflammatory local inflammation then it will aggravate the pain so that you can say of local limited inflammatory condition pain happening during walking jolting running could be also due to renal stone also due to amoebic hepatitis cholecystitis appendicitis uteric uretic colic inspired uh, pain in- increasing on inf- inspiration or coughing due to diaphragmatic pleurisy pain du- during micturition uretic colic pain during stooping hiatus hernia reflex esophagitis pain relieving with pressure like locker pelvic so all the colic pain will try to, they will, it will try to reduce pain relieving on lying still due to peritonitis pain decreasing with alkali food due to uh, peptic ulcer disease pain decreasing with vomiting peptic ulcer or in colic pain decreasing on sitting up or little bit stooping or little bit sitting or while sitting up or little bit stooping so that happens in pancreatitis just common uh, abdominal face faces which they say or appearances in case of gi they could be faces hippo- hippocratica this happens in the terminal stage of peritonitis patient is anxious looking bright eyes pale pinched face and cold sweat on the surface faces of dehydration when what happens when there is a dehydration sunken eyes drawn cheeks dry tongue in case of ruptured tubal gestation you will find pa- face with extreme pallor gasping type of respiration in women with reproductive age in case of acute hemorrhagic pancreatitis so there is no name for these conditions uh, just explaining for the uh name sake of abdominal faces there will be bluishness of the faces in case of acute hemorrhagic pancreatitis like in case of toxemia if there is a toxemia there will be dry and brown tongue which will signify a toxemia so thank you guys for watching this videos and soon i'll try to present abdominal examination video for the medicine and uh i'll try to put it up in the video as soon as possible and performa a link to download performa for this video will be given in the description of this video you can go and check it out thank you guys see you guys in the next video follow on youtube facebook instagram everywhere bye bye